Okay, so I'll start off in my usual fashion, just going over the status of those sort of more broad scale circulation patterns that affect our weather, go on to our current state of rainfall and soil moisture, and then get into some forecasts. Oops, and I'll go forward. So, as Jeff mentioned, we are in a week La Nina at the moment. Um, probably autumn, it might last a bit to autumn, and then. Um, go back to kind of neutral conditions like the late autumn or winter. Uh, Indian Ocean Dipole we don't need to worry about at this um, time of the year, that's more springtime thing. Now the, um, remember the interdecadal Pacific Oscillation, that 25 to 30 year cycle, or we about, can be 15 to 30 year cycle, uh, we tend to get either sort of uh, a spate of more El Ninos or um, a spate of more La Ninas. And it's positive mode, you tend to get more El Ninos. And um, it went briefly, it's been positive since 2014. Um, I think in our last briefing I mentioned that it had gone slightly negative and, and wondered whether, you know, things are changing a bit. But no, back, it's back, back to positive, so it was just a brief flirt of uh, <coughs> negative values. Uh, if we look at the sea surface temperatures, sort of warmer temperatures can, can bring us um, well, warm, warm surface temperatures but also it just means that um, there's sort of the air can pick up more moisture to give us more rain and uh, if we look this is a seasonal anomaly um, so it's about uh, three months and these yellow sort of orangey colours so they're warmer warmer than usual waters so that's kind of been the pattern so it's a seasonal that's the monthly so it has been really quite warm particularly sort of in that Tasman Sea area and that's pretty much last week so we're still in very much warmer than usual waters. Oh, daily. <laughs> so that was the 16th, so yeah, so good for a swim out there. Uh, another mode is that southern annular mode which is that when you've got, we've got, so we've got that bout of westerlies that around New Zealand and south of New Zealand and where that shifts, so in its positive mode, it's to the south of us and we tend to get more anti-cyclones and when it's um, negative, we get westerly, persistent westerly winds. So it has been, for quite some time now, um, you probably notice it hasn't been a whole lot of wind. Um, it's been in a positive mode and the forecast, so this, so the black line is, is how it's been, um, so sort of currently about here and the sort of red um, ensemble of lines is the forecast and down here also the, the forecast and it tends to um, remain at, in, a positive, in a positive mode. So kind of similar uh, to what we've had. Oops, keep going the wrong way. So current state, rainfall. So these down here is kind of the last three months, October, November, December. So October was quite wet for us, particularly for the southern area, dry up in the north. Um, November, still roughly kind of normal rainfall for the region. Um, it was mainly sort of wetter up in, up in the north, Kauwekas, um, quite dry down in southern Hawke's Bay. In December, we had um, good rainfall up in northern areas. areas. Um, most places got at least sort of two thirds, except maybe the Hiratonga Plains um, area, a bit drier than usual. But um, we've kind of started January with a good bang, and we're already, I mean, if, if you kind of average it out, we're already at 101% of our January rainfall. Certainly, the ranges, so a lot of the heat waters, should have had a, I imagine the rivers, hopefully, are doing all right at the moment because. Uh, the Ruhimis, Kawika Range, um, the sort of the northwestern ranges up by Waikiri and Moana, they've already exceeded their January totals. Um, and the Ruatina for Pains, 130% uh, already of their um, January rainfall. But short stall in Hiratonga um, and southern Hawke's Bay, but there's still probably bits and pieces of all to come uh, for this month. And because Gillian did um, ask specifically about January rainfall, I don't know if you wanted actual figures, but we've sort of got sort of two to three hundred mils in the ranges up in the northwest, probably about sort of 
20 to 30 around the Hiratonga Plains area, but sort of getting into 50s, 60s, um, down into Central Hawke's Bay. And lightning strikes had about 65, um, that's about half of what we had in um, November. So and they're mainly, mainly focused up in the north. Soil moisture, so we're not looking too bad. Um, we'll just remind you of how the graph works. The black line being the current state, going, going from the 1st of July to the 1st of July, as in the, for the calendar year. And um, the green line is the previous year. The, the envelope is the, the top is the 80th, um, 90th, sorry, percentile, bottom is the 10th percentile, so anything out of that is getting into more extreme values, and the double line is the median, the time of year. So if we're looking at our current state, we're pretty much, it's kind of just typical for, um, this is at Bridge Park, back in the Hastings, um, so it's just pretty much at median levels for the time of year. Onga Onga in Central Hawke's Bay, pretty much and this doesn't, this doesn't include yesterday's rain. This is a graph from yesterday, so it was up till um, pretty much Wednesday. So, um, as I mentioned, there has been quite a bit of rain in Central Hawke's Bay, so Onga Onga is looking okay. Crown Thorpe, so, to quite well to the west, up in the hill, southern to hill country, um, Hastings. Again, it's, it's sort of medium um, kind of levels above, so that's pretty average kind of conditions. Hangaroa right up to the north of the region, up past Wairua. Um, yeah, there's been a reasonable amount of rain up there, so that's, that's well above median levels. Taharua right up in the northwest of the region, again, that's well above normal levels. And looking at forecast, so as I mentioned, we're in a weak La Nina, and um, this is kind of the prediction of how it will go. Uh, so we're sort of January here, February, March, still kind of, it's just kind of flirts, weak, neutral, and then later on, um, forecasts are for it going just to neutral conditions. And there was forecast for the months ahead, um, uh, looking like above average temperatures and above normal rainfall and soil moisture, interestingly, near or below normal. Um, I'd probably say probably near, near normal or even above. Now this is just, uh, this, uh, the models do tend to, um, as with Nina's forecast, a lot of the models do have a precipitation pattern um, that uh, suggests above average rainfall. So this is kind of the anomaly fields and it's on the you know, dry, negative numbers would suggest we're drier than normal um, and the greens are the uh, wetter than normal. So as you can see, that's has got the North Island there particularly, wetter than normal. And the sort of the general pressure pattern is, um, if you imagine these dark, these redder colours kind of higher pressures and the bluer colours kind of lower pressures. So sort of higher pressures down here and the, uh, they are picking more lower pressures, probably more than they, than they have in previous months um, to the north of New Zealand and in the, particularly in the Tasman Sea. And that in particular, um, these are kind of wind flow patterns. You might pick out Australia here, um, and you can kind of see New Zealand's round about here, but the general flow is very much east northeast over us. So that's, the, I mean, that was quite signal quite early on um, last year that there was quite a prolonged period of, of this sort of flow going to happen. Um, so again, we can kind of have what um, pattern that we've had to date really of perhaps periods of re decent periods of dry fine weather but then also you know we're just getting uh, occasional bit of rain that's really been quite helpful. So I think that is pretty much me.
Morning, so I'm just going to give you a bit of an update on uh, how rural flows have been tracking through December and into January so far. This map is of December, it's the monthly mean flows compared to the long term means or the long term average. And you can see on this map uh, most of the colours being in the red, orange, yellow, um, pretty much all the sites in the region were either below or close to normal. Um, and then moving into, which, which uh, um, I know we had some rainfall in December, but I think it was towards towards the end of December. Yeah, memory. <laughs> so I don't know if the rivers it doesn't look like the rivers responded too much in terms of how it affected the mean flows, but certainly going into January so far, so this is provisional. Uh, we've got most sites in the region above or close to normal. We've got um, only really the, sort of towards the southern area, um, southern coastal and the Bromaho areas, which are b below normal. Um, and that's that's like the um, Mariah Totra um, catchment um, and Bromaho area. So, um, and the, the, all those sites are above normal. Um, quite a few of them, especially those in the Tuki Tuki, as uh, you mentioned, on the with the soil moisture and rainfall there, the, the river flows are well, well above normal, really. Um, and the same moving up into the headwaters of the Naruru and up north as well. So, um, And then I, as per usual, I've been given just a snapshot of a few of the sites throughout the region from north to south um, to, to enable a sort of comparison with the long-term record and, and specific years of interest. Um, starting with the Hangaroa River, um, this map basically has um, the Dotted black line is the long-term um, long-term mean flow. The light grey band is the uh, normal range, which is plus or minus 25% of the long-term mean. And then the um, slightly darker grey um, envelope is the essentially the full long-term range from minimum maximum. And the current year being this uh, the black line, and then we have a couple of years for comparison, which is the the blue line, which is last year's 2016-17, and then the ready pink colour line is uh, the 2012-13, which was a re reasonably dry year from pre recent records. So, you can, as as those previous maps showed, um, up north we had uh, those um, below normal river flows in December, and then moving into January, there's a quite a jump um, up in the flows. So, um, responding in the north. We also have um, the moving down to the Esk River, which was uh, sort of the central part of our region, I guess, um, tracking pretty much close to normal. Um, I think you also mentioned uh, Cranthorpe where you saw moisture and stuff were quite close to normal, weren't they? So I, I guess that's probably the closer to the coast and, and more central of our region, um, certainly from river flows point of view, close to normal. Moving to the Nororo at Fern Hill, um, the same sort of response from December to January, uh, a, big, a big jump up in the flows, and uh, moving down towards the Tuki Tuki, again, a lot of rain in the headwaters, boosting those flows, um, moving into January. So, <clears throat> In terms of the Niwa climate outlook for January to March, um, they're predicting river flows being um, equally likely to be in the normal or below normal range, um, and 20% chance to be above normal. So um, we'll see how they track over the next month or so. And um, in terms of um, low flow abstraction bands, um, with these higher flows, there are not, not a hell of a lot of bands on at the moment. Um, I'll just um, I'll take you to our web page just to show you the you can get a quick snap, snapshot summary of um, where current bands are, and this is just a table summarising all the sites within the region, and, and this table essentially goes from north to south, sort of across the region. Ron, can you move this to you? <coughs> so um, you can see, uh, so north, um, moving from the north of the region, coming down through the, like the Nuhaka, um, uh, and then coming down through, um, sort of, um, into the Esk River catchments, you know, no, no bounds on at the moment, no obstruction restrictions on the moment. Um, we have a, as you move sort of further south, we've we've got a few bands on um, the Iron Gate, Mariah Karkahor, but 
for, for quite a few of these streams, as you, as you head south, that there are bands on, but they're not always um, the lowest minimum flow that we've got. So some of these sites have multiple minimum flows. So there are a few which are, uh, particularly in the caribou catchment, where you've got the um, Karaiorewa and um, Te Wakaha and, and as such. Um, but um, and this table is always accessible you know, if you want to get a bit of a snapshot across the whole region um, through our website as well. So, um, yeah, so that's really river flows. Um, quite positive in terms of January and so far. We'll see how it tracks over the next month or two. So, yeah, my talk is going to be on the groundwater levels. Our ground, the groundwater levels that I'm going to talk about are mainly December. We do our um, water level runs on a monthly basis. So, for January, they were just finished yesterday, which didn't give me enough time, unfortunately, to report on them. But as an indication of how January's going, we've got to limited data at some of our wells, so I've plotted those up to show you, you know, what is the water level response over that January period. Um, I've mainly focused on the Hirotonga Royal Town, for that's where I mainly focus. That's obviously our biggest groundwater resources and where we have our most monitor wells. Um, and I've got a couple of slides that show last month's or November's and December's to see how things have changed because there's quite a dramatic change between the two months and that's probably due to irrigation kicking off uh, in November more so. So I'll start away. So I'll start off the Herotonga Plains. Um, this, these two maps are showing the water level conditions for November and December and we categorise them in terms of normal, above normal, below normal, etc. <coughs> the normal range is dated that sits between the 20th and 60th percentile. Uh, the highest is at the 80th to the maximum, and the last is from the minimum, to, uh, so below normal from the um, 20th percentile to the minimum, and the last, of course, is the minimum ever. So we've got uh, November here on the left, and we've got December on the right for the Hirotonga Plains. You, if you just take a general look at it, you can see in November there's a lot more green colours and blue colours, which indicate groundwater levels for November were more normal to above normal for this time of the for that time of the year. Um, but then you can see in December it's changed quite a lot and groundwater levels have dropped into this below normal sort of condition with some wells measuring record lows for that month of December. Um, the measurements here, this was measured in early November and this was around about December the 7th and 10th. So this can affect the conditions that you get. Obviously if you measure it later in the month you would more likely to get perhaps lower ones for summer. Uh, etc. or you might have a rainfall event that might affect it which is what happens in December later on. Um, what we usually see is a pattern of below normal levels clustering in the unconfined area west of Flaxmere. Uh, this is that's quite normal and the confined area staying pretty much normal. In this case for December it's a little bit unusual in terms of we're seeing a few below normal water levels towards the coast. Uh, it's not you know, die or anything, it's just unusual, you usually see more normal ones there. Um, there's a couple of blue spots there that are a bit funny. I think that one probably on the coast I haven't had a chance to look. It's probably to do with those high tides that we get in December. It's very tidally affected. Uh, so I suspect that when they measured it was close to that time there. Um, and some of the other ones are short records. I've got numbers in there, you probably can't see it from back there, but the numbers in the centre of those circles indicate how many years of monitoring we have. Um, so, of course, they're very sensitive to extreme values. I picked up a, I picked a couple of wells to look at, and this time I removed, usually I have a, a normal uh, band in there, and I thought I'd just keep it simplistic, and I'd forgotten that Rob had changed envelopes, so I thought, I'll be consistent with him, I'll keep rid of the envelopes, <laughs> and just keep it simple, so uh, we'll see if it works or not. So, I pretty much the envelope plot, it, plot is showing the maximum level at the top there and the minimum up at the bottom of the grey and then I've just got the mean value dashed in the centre. Uh, the black line is our current water levels. How does that compare to the rest of the water levels that we've ever measured? Red line is uh, the 2012-13 year. We'll put that in because when those water levels were measured in that year they, they were very low so they're unusual conditions so we like to plot as a sort of a reference uh, time series. And then the blue line is the uh, previous year's water levels just as a comparison as well. So we've got well 3737 which is located up around Flaxmere. It's in the unconfined zone. It's been measured since 1974 so it's a very long record in this well. Uh, and well 1450 is over by Awatoto. It's in the confined area. Groundwater levels at this site are artesian and it's been measured since 1992. What they both show is that um, since the November measurements, again November quite early, groundwater levels sharply dipped. 
I don't know whether the irrigation period started a little bit later for this time of the year and everybody slowly switched on. Um, or it was, I know that it was dry, but I, I'm not sure if it was exceptionally dry, so I suspect it was a combination of the dry weather and people switching on. Uh, but groundwater levels have dropped below the mean value. If I had envelope plot, they'd probably be plotting somewhere in the uh, below normal range. In, I suppose the other thing you can see is that in 2012-13, you know, we're about there now. Uh, the conditions can change really quickly. That, in 2012-13, they went to record lows, uh, but in other years they'll stay up. Uh, so, yeah. Because I knew we were doing a talk in January, I was like, oh, what are, you know, what are the January water levels doing? What can I use to show you? So we've got some telemetered sites. This is the raw data. So you've got some anomalies here that haven't been corrected yet, but you can still see how the groundwater levels pl are plotting. This well is close to well 3737. It's in the unconfined area. It's called substation by Fernhill. Um, but what I wanted to show was, this is uh, pretty much January coming down the steep line, and by Mid-January, groundwater levels start to rise, so there's some sort of recharge event kicking in here uh, on both sites. So this is by Flaxmere and this is substation. So I suspect that when we do look at the January groundwater levels and we, you know, we plot them into categories of normal, below normal, we'll see a lot more normal conditions than we have in December because of that rise, which is great because you can see in the other years, you know, when the uh, when December or uh, November, October, December kick in, groundwater levels typically just keep going down and down and down until about autumn, usually March, April, that's about their lowest level, and then they kick up. So when you do get a recharge event like this, it's great, it keeps things a bit higher, it's great for your spring flows, your spring feed streams, provides a bit more storage in the aquifer. So that's a really good sign for us, it's a good sign probably for flow flows as well. So, Rua Tanifa, Rua Tanifa is always a funny one because there's no real pattern to it like the Herotoma where you tend to have clusters in certain areas, you just get a mixed bag. Uh, again, it's very similar pattern in terms of uh, conditions for, as with the Herotoma, November. Again, lots of blues, lots of green, groundwater levels are you know quite high compared uh, to other years and then come December when we take our measurements, they've suddenly dropped quite sharply and you can see a number of record lows coming in. Um, still some normal conditions but you can, you can see that overall they've dropped uh, quite a bit uh, in terms of their water level conditions. Again, a couple of graphs. I've grabbed 1458, that's in the lower Rua Tanifa, close to Stockade Road. It's about 30 metres deep. They've both measured since 92. And uh, Well 22 is uh, in a Mr. Apple Orchard on State Highway 50 in the upper Rua Tanifa. Both show that sharp decline from November to December that's going on, and both of them are showing for that month record lows uh, for December. So that's, yeah, that's interesting, um, and you can compare to the other years. So the telemetry plot, again, Ashcott Park, um, still upper rural town, a bit, a bit further to the south, and near Ashcott Roads, Ashcott and Burnside Roads, and Takapau, close to Takapau of course, you can see that re re same recharge event coming in that you saw in the Hirotonga Plains, uh, bringing those water levels up, so again I expect the January water levels in Ruatanifa, Ruatanifa to measuring uh, more normal conditions for, for January. And in summary, so groundwater levels for December were pretty much normal to below normal, some obviously record lows. Uh, groundwater levels, we, they'll still continue to decline, that's normal, we expect them to go down until autumn. Some are usually between March and April, sometimes they can go to May, but usually around uh, March and April. Uh, the recharge, there's a recharge over mid-December to mid-January, that should result in some more normal conditions for January, but we'll just wait and see what that looks like. Um, but you know, groundwater level, level conditions can change very quickly, so if we have a prolonged dry, dry period, they can change, you have a rainfall event, they can suddenly bump up, so it's really hard to predict what's going to happen going forward because they're very sensitive. That's it for me.